I'd like to introduce our first storyteller. Mani Mina is with the Department of Industrial Design and Electrical and Computer Engineering. He always followed his passion and followed his heart in learning, studying, and engaging with all that is possible. And he is going to tell you a story entitled, What is the Speed of Love? I'm afraid as the first speaker, I would really not follow what the great story you said. And I'll try. So let me start. <clears throat> um, this is a very emotional story. So. so what's the speed of love is my title. And I want to start, when you will look at somebody teaching, which is mostly telling in my time, what do you do? Why are some so great and some really not so great? It turns out that when you listen to somebody talk, when I listen to somebody talk, if I could think and dream about who they are, how are they outside in their own regular lives, not in the lecture position, I always knew more about them and I could remember very well who they were, what they taught. So it, for me, it has always been about story. Can I make what they tell me and fit it in my life story, my interest? And can, I, can it make sense to me? I am an applied electromagnetic person. I'm going to refer to it as an EM. <clears throat> Most of my days, even in vacation, in sleep, I am dreaming about EM. I'm dreaming about how can I get more people involved with EM? How can I teach it better? <clears throat> how, what is the history of EM? And how can I make, it, make an impact on that? But I want to let you know that I failed my first EM course. But I didn't exactly fail it because Professor Hodges refused to give anything less than B minus. If you were there, you would get B minus. That's a dead body, you know, great. The class was great. Professor Hodges is amazing, still is not teaching, he's around. But I couldn't relate. I couldn't connect the way he did to my story of passion. So I ended up hating EM. Not hating Professor Hodges, but hating EM. I want to make sure that there's a theme in me that says, it's interesting how little things become so huge in our lives and how small nuances in the time-space continuum make such big impact on us and we don't realize where it came from. So it was the emotional connection that I didn't have and I was looking for. At the same time, the late Professor Robert Leacock had a course called Society, History, Art. And I said, I should take it. In that course, <clears throat> Leacock encouraged me because Leacock was the first person who helped me dream as a physics student. And he said, dreaming is okay, make mistakes with it. However, in that course, the history part of it was done by late Professor Robert Schofield. Man, Schofield was loud, exciting, energizing. He was always upfront, asking for input. Schofield will let you know when you're off and he will let you know when you're wrong. But the level of fascination I had with him made me argue. Most of the class, I was arguing with him. We were talking. And most of the class, I didn't want it to end. It, fast. it ended too fast. I loved that course. Just for the record, I didn't get an A. I got a B with a note on my final paper that Schofield said, this is an amazing thinking, beautiful thought. I wish you could write. <laughs> And I think that's a great message. So the impression of Schofield, which still stays with me, was more strong. So I did what every stupid people would do. I actually went to him and I studied independent study every semester for three to four years. We had amazing meetings. I started studying Einstein. We will have one or two meetings a week. And he was passionate, exciting. He would yell. I would just love his yelling at me. He was so energetic son of a preacher. In all these meetings, I had one message, one message for me that this is what I want to do. I want to get my PhD with history of science under Robert Spoke Schofield. I was working on Einstein, and Einstein was talking about speed of light, and speed of light was very limiting for me. For him was a constant. For me was something that let us not know, didn't allow us to know much deeper into the universe. If it was millions and millions times more, faster. 
we could know so much about where we come from. That was my exciting, the speed of light. For Einstein, who was my intellectual hero, it was a constant, important constant. For me, it was a limitation. To this day, it is a limitation. I wish it was faster. But I realized Einstein did not, did let go of Newtonian mechanics, but did not let go of Maxwellian model. Maxwell, the one I didn't like. So the more I read about Einstein, the more I read about his work, I found a very interesting thing. I found that his in introduction to the last book of Maxwell, I couldn't let it go. I needed to know more about Maxwell. So I went to Schofield and I said, I want to change. I want to work on Maxwell. And he said, no, he yelled at me. Nobody wants to. I had 10 years. No, for 10 years, I don't let anybody do that. But I insisted. And anyhow, I was defeated. I thought he doesn't accept it. As it was going, he said, OK, I give you two weeks. Prove to me that there is something in Maxwell. So I spent day and night in the tier four of library. I was there until they would kick me out. And after 12 days, I went back to Schofield's office. And I said, I'm sorry. I can't find anything new, but I can find relationship. I can find some connection, reframing. And I was so passionate after two days of debates, the moment that I was totally defeated, and I stood up and I said, thank you, and I turned, he said, wait, you can work on Maxwell. And that was heavy. It stopped me breathing. I dragged myself to the elevator. I sat on the corner, and I don't remember anything. I remember when the elevator went down, there was this guy who said, hey, are you okay? I said, yeah, I just came out with a meeting with Schofield. <laughs> so I kept doing it, and I loved every moment of it. Until one day, about nine months later, I realized that I need to know more. So out of nowhere, I left the library. I went to the physics floor, to the fifth room, fifth floor of physics building. I knocked at uh, Hodges' door, and I asked Professor Hodges if it is possible for me to work with him. Because I need to know Maxwell and him. OK. And he said yes. But it was very emotional. I had broken voice, teary eyes. <clears throat> Um, the best way I can explain, I did two major ideas for Maxwell. I found those. But the most important thing I want to tell you about this story, it is funny again what happens. I started to look for the speed of light, and I was unhappy with it. And I found speed of love. What I found is this is a more important speed for me. When I like something, I s overcome everything. When we like something, it consumes us. And things that are hard become simple. So I claim, when we do things, even when we have mistakes, we have to have joy. It's a long thing. It will change us. That is the love we are looking for. And that is it's very hard to pass it to our students. Speed of love. Thank you for listening to my story.